The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, uh, one minute uh, to nine, so I'll, uh, uh, I'll get started in one minute from now. All right, it is uh, nine o'clock, so uh, uh, let's get uh, started. Good morning, um, my name is uh, Walter Heck. I'm uh, uh, the technical director of uh, Olin Data, and I'm uh, going to tell you some, some things about the Puppet Forge today. Um, instead of showing you a bunch of slides, I figured I would uh, show you the Forge uh, um, live and explain to you the different parts of uh, uh, what it has to offer and uh, what you need to pay attention to. Um, so I hope that everybody can see my screen. If you cannot, uh, please uh, uh, mention it in the, uh, in the chat room or uh, put up your hand. Um, then we can, uh, we can adjust. Um, so here in the background, you see the, uh, the Puppet Forge. You can reach it on forge.puppetlabs.com. The Puppet Forge is basically a public uh, website repository uh, of uh, uh, Puppet modules. So um, if you are uh, creating a Puppet uh, um, repository and you need uh, to uh, write some Puppet code for MySQL, you won't be uh, creating your own MySQL module. Instead, you go to the Puppet Forge and say, hey, I'm looking for a MySQL module. Now, that sounds like a simple question, except that uh, it isn't really. If I do a simple search here, for instance, for MySQL, you'll see that it yields 58 modules matching MySQL. And that's uh, uh, less than uh, convenient. Um, what you'll see is a, a number of metrics and, and trust uh, uh, um, metrics that will allow you to figure out which one of these 58 you might, uh, might want to use. Um, so before we go there, uh, here we see a, uh, a supported label. On the right-hand side, we see supported and puppet approved. Uh, what that means is the puppet supported uh, modules are maintained and managed by Puppet Labs. Uh, they are tested with Puppet Enterprise, and um, uh, uh, they are uh, um, they fall under the Puppet Enterprise support. So if you have a Puppet Enterprise license uh, and you use one of these modules and you have a problem with the module, then that that problem will fall under your Enterprise support license. If you're not using Puppet Enterprise, it's just a label of uh, that should give you the trust that says, "Hey, Puppet Labs uh, is providing support over this." Uh, module in their enterprise product, so it, it's, it's a good indicator that it's a good quality module. Um, you can see here a small list of some of the Puppet supported modules, but there are a ton more. And if you have in your search results a supported module, you'll see a little label supported uh, in here. Um, so that's the, the first thing. If we The, the second thing is uh, Puppet approved uh, uh, labels. <coughs> Sorry, uh, the Puppet approved label means this uh, module is uh, managed and maintained by someone or multiple people in the community. And Puppet Labs has said, this is a good quality module. We are not taking over maintenance, but we are supporting, uh, we are approving the, the module with a spe special uh, label. So if I look at 
uh, for instance, Arioc Redis is Puppet approved. So if I search for Redis, I'll find a bunch of uh, uh, modules, and I'll find here that the Arioc Redis uh, module carries the approved label. So that's also a good uh, quality stamp. Um, going back to the MySQL example. Um, so we, we can see a bunch of things from this screen. First of all, we see uh, uh, immediately that this uh, Puppet Labs MySQL module has w over 1 million downloads. Um, the reason that this number is so high compared to any of the other ones is that um, the uh, newer ways to deploy modules on your Puppet Masters is using R10K. Um, and R10K is a tool that does a whole bunch of things, but among others, it downloads modules from the Puppet Forge. Uh, and that means that uh, um, this 1 million downloads is not actually 1 million people using it, but uh, uh, 1 million times uh, uh, the module was downloaded. So it's a bit of a skewed metric, but it is a good uh, uh, indicator uh, in the whole group of other metrics that this is a, a decent module. Um, Right next to that 1 million, we see uh, the uh, composite score, um, which is based on user feedback and uh, some automatic uh, checks. If we go here, we can see um, on the top right, uh, we see uh, the quality score and we see the community rating. Community rating is where we can vote on this module. So if I signed in with my uh, account, I could I could uh, vote here on, hey, do I like this module and when I've used it? And that way uh, it becomes, uh, uh, after a while, possible for, um, for people to have a good idea whether this module is good or not. Then um, one of the other things that we see is that, so there's a MySQL module by Puppet Labs, a MySQL module by someone called Gausto, Example42, and uh, Gajdav, and a whole bunch more. Um, you have to choose one of these. You cannot choose multiple uh, uh, of, these, uh, of these modules, so you'll have to choose one of these. And which one are you going to choose? Um, so there's a lot of different metrics that come into play uh, in, in choosing. So we have the Puppet Labs supported, the Puppet Labs approved uh, modules. We have the number of downloads, the uh, quality score. Um, what I always take a look at as well is here, which version is it at? Is it above version 1.0? Um, when was the last release? September 22nd, that's not too long ago. Um, so that kind of uh, gives us a good uh, uh, idea on how many how many downloads were there for this release uh, so that gives us a, some some more insight if we look at for instance this module uh, it even says here already deprecated use puppet labs mysql uh, slowly it seems like the um, uh, the ecosystem is moving more towards using uh, uh, single modules um, but if you are using for instance box up mysql uh, you can see that it is at version 004. That makes me wonder whether I would want to use it in a production uh, setup. Um, so these are things we can see from the simply the search results uh, page. Then here on the left, uh, we can filter for operating systems. So if we wanted to uh, run MySQL on Windows, we would need a module that actually supports MySQL on Windows. So I select the operating system and I see that zero modules actually support Windows. Um, if I select Red Hat, it's better. Uh, we see 13 modules matching uh, Windows, uh, matching Red Hat operating system. Um, unfortunately, this uh, information, uh, this filter information is not 100% accurate. Uh, because it relies on the person creating the module to uh, uh, to include a file in the module um, that that actually has the metadata in it. So if I go to uh, the the module page itself, here on the uh, module page, I can click through to the uh, project URL, 
which opens the actual source code of the uh, of the module. Uh, and inside the module, I'll see here um, metadata.json. Here in the metadata.json file, we see operating system support. And the module will show up on the forge. It will parse uh, this uh, uh, operating system support uh, thing. So the Puppet Labs MySQL module clearly does not uh, support Windows at this moment. Uh, but there might be, it might actually work on Windows or it might actually work on, a, on, a, on an operating system that's not mentioned here. It's just that the module author has not said, hey, this, I verify that this module works on, on that operating system. Um, so over time, as you're using more and more modules, you will slowly start to learn that uh, which authors are good module authors. Uh, of course, Puppet Labs modules are usually good quality. Uh, here, uh, Puppet, there's a difference between Puppet and Puppet Labs. So Puppet is the, um, uh, the, the community uh, um, released modules. Um, and then uh, we have, for instance, Isinga. So the Isinga module is created by the people from Isinga, which gives you a good uh, indication that it's most likely a, uh, a good, good quality module. Um, and as you see, there are uh, uh, some people that you might have never heard of, some people that you will have heard of, and slowly you will start to see um, which authors are uh, creating good modules and which aren't. Um, now let's look at uh, one good module and one bad module and see what the difference is. Let's look at a, a bad one first. So. Uh, This one, for instance, the first thing we see when we click through to the actual module page is that it has very little information. A puppet module for installing and configuring MySQL. Um, it has a broken campaign image. Um, the readme is very, very uh, uh, low on details. Their um, license, you can see here, that's fine that the, they included the license. And the quality score is a 2.0. Uh, you can see here how that, uh, um, what made that quality uh, a 2.0. The code quality gives eight warnings. So we can see what actually uh, happened uh, to this uh, uh, code quality. Uh, and we see that there's tab characters in the module. That's usually a good indication of a not so good quality module. Uh, we have five uh, notices for uh, Puppet compatibility. Uh, parser validations against uh, 3.8 and 4.2 goes well. Um, but for instance, against 2.6, it fails. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, 2.6 and 2.7, uh, you can wonder if you want to still uh, uh, worry about modules that support that. And then we have uh, the uh, metadata quality, uh, where we can see that some of the uh, um, uh, metadata.json information is missing or incorrect. Uh, and then community rating, we have zero uh, ratings from the community. Um, so that's uh, not so uh, uh, easy to, uh, uh, to judge. Um, here at the top, we uh, see uh, a bunch of tags. We see how to use the Puppet Module tool to install this module. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend using the Puppet Module tool. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at it in a minute uh, really quickly to uh, show how it works. Uh, but there are better mechanisms out there. Uh, here at the top, we have the um, uh, link to the author of the uh, module, where you can see just an overview page of all the modules that they have uh, created, and most of them have a very low uh, quality score. Uh, 
Then we have a link to the project URL, which I already mentioned. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, and a link where you can report issues. Now, what is uh, uh, important here is that, um, again, there isn't really anything that tells us this is a horrible module. Uh, it has some uh, lower quality scores, but the overall picture uh, should give you a, a decent idea. So if we go to project URL, this should normally lead to the source code of the uh, uh, module, but it doesn't. So that's a good indication that something's wrong. Uh, reporting issues can be done here. Uh, and we see that the actual uh, Git repository contains all of the modules. Uh, instead of a Git repository per module. It's not per se wrong, but it's uh, um, something you want to be careful about uh, adjusting, uh, adopting inside your, uh, uh, your project. And if we look into the MySQL uh, uh, directory, we can see, for instance, a uh, Here we click on the 100 commits. Uh, we see other uh, indications. The, all of the commit messages are update readme.md. That seems unlikely. If you look at the module itself, uh, we see that there is a README that is very basic. Uh, we already saw that. Um, we can go look into it inside the manifest. Uh, there's only an init.pp, which gives us a good indication of what's happening. It downloads MySQL uh, server instead of installing it from a package. Uh, so it downloads an RPM uh, instead of installing the, uh, from a package manager. All of these things. Uh, you can look into the code to see what the quality level is, but we're venturing off the path of the uh, Puppet Forge a little bit. Uh, let's go back to the Puppet Forge. So that was a module that didn't look so good. Let's go back and look at the, uh, for instance, the Puppet Labs MySQL module, which is quite a good module. Um, Instantly, we see a bunch more uh, information. The quality score is 5.0. The community rating is 3.8. Um, we have uh, compatibility information, which operating systems is it supported on. Uh, we have here uh, the link to the author is Puppet Labs, where you can see all the Puppet Labs uh, 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 modules. We have a link to the project, which I'm already have open here on this tab, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, we have a link that brings us directly to an issue tracker where we can su uh, submit issues. Uh, this is the Puppet Labs issue tracker, of course. Um, so that's also uh, uh, great that we can, uh, if we have problems, we know exactly where to go. And then um, here uh, below this gray uh, box, we start uh, seeing a lot more information. This All this information that's on the uh, Forge uh, page of a Puppet module is actually parsed out of the uh, uh, metadata.json. Um, that means that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the metadata.json uh, and, and some other information, the readme is parsed out of it, uh, out of the module itself. Uh, and, and shown here. So we, we can see that we have more headers here. So it creates a list of types automatically. We have an actual change log where we can read what actually changed. Uh, this is very important over time. If you want to use a MySQL module in, a, uh, in an enterprise environment, you'll be having a, that module in your environment for the next years probably. So you want to make sure that whenever there is a new feature, there is an actual uh, um, uh, change log that can show you what is actually happening. We have uh, dependencies, so we can see which other modules do we need in order to install this uh, or to use this module. Uh, we have 
compatibility uh, tab that shows us nicely which operating systems are being supported and which uh, Puppet Enterprise uh, versions. We have uh, the license, which we had on the other one as well, and we have the uh, score. We see that the module uh, in the community uh, um, works quite uh, quite okay. Uh, people say that they cannot use it without changes. Uh, personally, I have a MySQL consulting background and I've used this module in many different environments and I have yet to see an environment where this module needed uh, adjustments, but hey, uh, that's uh, community people uh, uh, rating it. So if they uh, have run into these uh, situations, then uh, um, that is an indication. Um, now, if we look through the README, we can see that there is quite a bit of uh, uh, information here, all kinds of code examples, nice explanations. It's quite a long README. If you read this whole README, you will know a lot about how to use this, uh, uh, this module. So this gives us a lot more uh, uh, confidence that this is actually a, a, a good module. Um, of course, you can go into the uh, GitHub page as well. Uh, I'll just quickly only do that. Um, but for instance, here in uh, the manifest directory, I see different commits nicely um, uh, linked to a issue tracker uh, number. I see uh, a number of classes. I see a params.pp. That's usually a good indication that it's a, a, a decent uh, module. So this gives me a lot more confidence uh, that this module can actually do what I want it to do. Um, so that's about the, uh, the, the quality of the uh, modules and how to figure out which module you could be, uh, you could be using. Um, here the, uh, uh, at the bottom right, we see a, a list of frequent contributors. We have camp to camp uh, actually contributing more than Puppet Labs. Uh, camp to camp is a Puppet Labs partner uh, from uh, uh, France and Switzerland. Uh, they do some very good work. They have a very nice uh, uh, LDAP module. If you're ever wondering what a good module, a good quality module looks like, uh, look at their Open LDAP uh, module. It's really, really quite nice. Good README with examples. Uh, we have uh, again a list of types, the change log, dependencies, uh, even an issue tracker. And if you go to the actual uh, modules page, you'll also see uh, that it's quite uh, it's doing quite all right. Uh, we have uh, Travis uh, CI uh, automated testing in here. Uh, with with a link to the results, so we can actually uh, click on build passing, and it takes us to Travis CI uh, to show us the uh, the build. Actually, there is some problem. Um, well, it's not for us to uh, to uh, figure that out. Um, but anyway, it's it's a it's an active module, 600 commits, 22 contributors. 48 releases. This is really a module that, that, that gives us uh, good hopes for a, uh, for a good uh, level module. Um, so that's the Puppet Forge itself. Uh, now, obviously, you can publish a module. Uh, you can do it manually here if you want to. Um, you'll have to sign in first. Uh, however, um, uh, there is there are some easier uh, ways uh, because if you're starting to uh, uh, publish a module you'll most likely want to uh, be able to um, uh, to do it more often so uh, the guys at Maestro Dev uh, they actually uh, created a gem called Puppet Blacksmith that contains a bunch of uh, uh, rake tasks that can help you more easily upgrade versions and uh, push a module to the uh, to the puppet forge and that's really uh, really great so if you uh, uh, just install gem install blacksmith 
and then add uh, uh, the rake tasks of the blacksmith uh, gem to your uh, rake file, you can start using these uh, rake tasks. Um, so even with one command, rake module release, you can actually do a, a full um, uh, release to the Puppet Forge. It bumps your uh, uh, module version, it cleans all the stuff, it does a build, uh, it tags it, it pushes it, uh, so that's really uh, uh, quite uh, quite useful to uh, to use this, um, and it will make your uh, your life of publishing modules uh, much easier. So take a look at uh, at, at Blacksmith uh, definitely. Now I mentioned that uh, we would take a look at uh, um, the Puppet module tool. I have here a. Uh, Test Puppet Master. Make the font size a bit bigger. So Puppet comes built in with what is called the Puppet Module Tool. Um, it can be used to install and configure, uh, to install and download modules, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take a quick look at the uh, things that it does uh, uh, do well. So Puppet Module List will give you a nice list of all the modules in all the different uh, uh, places. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the, um, the Puppet Module tool is actually able to uh, uh, resolve dependencies. So it parses the metadata.json of each module and then uh, tells us which uh, uh, dependencies each of these modules have. And when you say Puppet Module install, it can also install uh, the dependencies uh, for a uh, specific module. Um, we see different locations with uh, different uh, uh, modules. Uh, so I think Puppet Module list dash dash tree will try to, s to show us the dependency tree instead of the, uh, uh, the file location uh, uh, tree. Um, so we see that the Elasticsearch module is missing a, a dependency and the Puppet Labs MySQL module is missing a dependency as well. Uh, and that's fine, we can, uh, we can resolve that later. Uh, a missing dependency doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, module won't work because uh, the uh, dependency actually uh, um, might lie in code that you are not actually using. So if there is a, uh, a dependency on... Um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, here the Elasticsearch module has a dependency on uh, the YUM uh, module from Serid uh, SC. Uh, that might be the case, but maybe uh, we are only running on Ubuntu, so we don't actually have any any of the code that uses the YUM uh, module uh, is not being used. So then there is no problem in us not having that uh, that dependency. Um, so the Puppet Module tool can also do a search uh, in the Puppet Forge, um, but it's quite useless in my opinion. If you look at the results, for instance, of a, of a, a Puppet Module search MySQL, you'll get 58 results, if not more, uh, that don't tell you anything. It tells you a one-liner description of the module, and it tells you the uh, um, the author and uh, the tags, but this is not enough to make a, dec a decision on. So you will have to go and look into what each of these modules uh, does. Um, so we can install any of these modules if we wanted to. Uh, I think we can also, because I would prefer to not, yeah. So we can create a temporary module path uh, and then say puppet module install puppet labs MySQL into slash slash module path.
And what that will do is it will download the uh, latest version of this module from the uh, Puppet Forge and all of the dependencies of that module. And it will install that in the module path that I have mentioned. So if I now look into the modules uh, directory, then I have here my uh, modules and their uh, dependencies. So this uses the versions of the modules that are on the Puppet Forge. This does not use the, uh, the Git uh, versions uh, or the GitHub uh, uh, versions. This uh, downloads the, uh, the, the tarball, tarballs that were released to the Puppet Forge. And that immediately also means uh, what the restriction is. Um, because now, as you see, there is no uh, uh, Git uh, uh, history, there's no commit log, so I cannot actually um, uh, create here or, or, or see here the, the history. So if I do a, a Git log, it doesn't show me anything. So that's not super useful. Um, I'll remove that. However, if I go, this is to, by coincidence a Puppet Master that I've been doing some work on. Uh, so if I go to environments production, um, I am using a, a tool called R10K on this uh, uh, on this node, and R10K, uh, uh, among all the other things, can also download modules for you. Um, so what it does, uh, in a nutshell, is uh, uh, each um, uh, control repository uh, contains a so-called puppet file. Each puppet repository contains a so-called puppet file, and that actually uh, mentions a uh, a list of modules that we will be using. So we have here uh, some modules. Uh, I think a two. Uh, we had to make some changes, so we actually forked the module on GitHub, and we want to use the uh, the Git version of this uh, module. But for a large part of these modules, we are actually uh, just using specific versions that are available on the forge. Um, so we have this uh, uh, puppet file here, and then uh, when we run R10K, R10K deploy environment, uh, dash PV debug is just to, uh, to show us uh, what's happening, but R10K deploy environment, uh, will deploy all the environments that are mentioned in the control repository. And as you see, um, it deploys, uh, let's take the production environment. It deploys, for instance, uh, the Apache module inside the module path in the production environment. And this is done because here in my puppet file, it says, uh, module Apache version 1.6.0. So if I go to modules uh, Apache, note that we here also don't see the, uh, uh, the Git history. However, uh, as we see here in our uh, puppet file, we also had a few modules that we did want to uh, modify. So we have, for instance, the Kibana 4 uh, module because it was very new. Uh, we had to make some modifications. And because we specified in the um, uh, puppet file which, uh, uh, how to say, which um, Git repository to use, if we look here, we have an actual .git directory. So I can also uh, use git log inside this directory, and it will be its own, uh, the, the checkout of the Git repository. Um, Last thing is on your development environment. In this case, I have my uh, development code on my uh, laptop here. And so I don't want to um, actually um, uh, go and fully do an R10K deploy on this machine. I just want to download the, the modules. So I have here also a puppet file. And then I can just say R10K. Uh, sorry. Art and K puppet file install dash dash verbos. 
and it will go and download and install the modules from the Puppet Forge and from the GitHub locations that we have specified. Uh, one thing to note is that the uh, while the Puppet module tool is able to resolve dependencies, the uh, R10K tool does not resolve dependencies. And because of that, it uh, um, doesn't jive well with um, the uh, uh, dependencies. Uh, so you have to list all the dependencies in the uh, R10K uh, uh, Puppet file um, manually. All right, uh, I think this was a, a, a good introduction into the uh, Puppet Forge. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I'll uh, uh, um, open the uh, uh, floor, the virtual floor to questions. Uh, I'll stop the broadcast here. Does anybody have any questions? You uh, feel free to either uh, put up your hand uh, symbol or to uh, write a question in the uh, uh, in the chat, and I'll uh, I'll be happy to uh, to answer them. If nobody has any questions, then um, I think we will uh, uh, end the uh, webinar. I thank you very much for attending. We will be uh, uh, um, uploading the recording of this webinar uh, uh, later today uh, onto the uh, onto our YouTube channel, and then send all of you a uh, a link. Um, so uh, you'll hear from us uh, later today or. Uh, tomorrow. Ah, I see there is a... Ah, sorry, I saw questions coming in and I uh, go to webinar uh, control panel, but it was people saying thank you. You're more than welcome. I hope you had a good time and uh, um, please join us for our next uh, webinars. Thank you.